will get closer to him. When I recite Christianity's most famous prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, the Lord's Prayer, the very second line is, Hallowed be thy name. It's almost exactly the same idea. As a Christian, I've been surprised at the many similarities I've found between Krishna and Jesus. But most Christian fundamentalists still refuse to accept that they can learn anything from or have anything in common with any other religion. I, like many Christians in the West, mm. went to Sunday school, mm. went to church, mm and was frankly taught to be intolerant towards other religions and when we were taught about Hinduism and the many gods we were actually taught to see these gods as idols and Krishna rather than being a manifestation of the divine was an idol. A fourth century poet uh, talking to God whoever the God is the guru or the God he says uh, there are innumerable ways to reach you. As all the rivers, straight or crooked, meet the ocean. So, oh my Lord, all these various ways uh, somehow take us there. So, if you have that spiritual humility to not denounce the other roads out of existence, other ways of out of existence and cling to your own road, you will reach there. If we could learn to find unity in these common spiritual values, things that aren't unique to Jesus, then it would make things like Christian fundamentalism, Islamic fundamentalism, even Hindu fundamentalism that attempts to separate people, sure. it would make it even more of a nonsense than it actually is. One of the opening prayers of Rig Veda, it says, Ano Bhadraha Kritvo Yantu Vishwataha. Let noble ideas and thoughts come to me from all over the world. Mm. Unless we keep our doors open, mm. the humanity is going to be poorer and poorer. Yeah. But the factors which are responsible for that are political and economic factors. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't have the logic of love, as a driving force behind politics and economy, mm. the future of religion is very bleak, it's bleak it's very bleak. bleak. At a key moment in the Gospel of John, Jesus tells his disciples, other sheep have I which are not of this fold. I believe he was telling them and us that there are other ways to God just as valid as Christianity. And from what I've seen here in India, there are lots of points of connection between Hinduism and Christianity, between Jesus and Krishna. And Hindus have no problem understanding Jesus and accepting his teachings. My last night in Vrindavan was the culmination of the Hindu holiday of Diwali or the festival of light. Traditionally, everyone lights lamps or candles to signify the victory of light over darkness, good over evil. Hindus believe that there is something inside all of us which is pure, infinite and eternal. So just as Christians celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas, Hindus have Diwali, a celebration of this inner light the knowing of which will banish all darkness, all ignorance. But what worries me is that many Christians still have a big problem with Hinduism and think that worshipping Krishna is plain wrong. For me, this is not the right attitude. The real Jesus didn't just want people to become Christians, but for everyone to experience the kingdom of God by whatever means is best for them. In the next part, 
I will investigate another major religious teacher whose religion has spread all over Asia. Not only does his life story have uncanny similarities to that of Jesus, but his teachings are very similar too. We've already heard of the remarkable similarities between the life stories of Krishna and of Jesus. But here in India, there's another important religious figure, also the result of miraculous birth, who was tempted by the devil before beginning his public ministry at the age of 30, who performed miracles such as walking on water and the feeding of 500, and who challenged the established religious order and presented an alternative way of understanding the world, and who spread his teachings and wisdom through parables and sayings. Now it all sounds extraordinarily familiar, but I'm not talking about Jesus, but of Prince Sudhartha Gautama, or Buddha. I am now in northern India, in the foothills of the Himalayas. After the Chinese invasion of Tibet in 1950, this area became the spiritual home of Tibetan Buddhism. In my search for the hidden story of Jesus, I have come here to investigate the similarities between Jesus and Buddha. More than 400 years before Jesus appeared in Palestine, Prince Siddhartha Gautama was born the only son of a local king. According to tradition, his mother, Maya, gave birth to him miraculously. Like Jesus, he was also predicted to become a great man from birth and wise men traveled to see him. As Siddhartha neared his 30th birthday, he began to realize the world was full of pain and suffering. So he decided to leave home and take up the life of a wandering monk. For the next six years, he meditated on the sufferings of the world. Like Jesus, he was also tempted by a devil figure, but resisted. Finally, one day, while sitting under a tree, he found enlightenment and began his ministry to teach the world about Dharma, or the right way of living. Today, Buddhism has spread all over the world and has over 300 million followers. I had arranged to meet Thai Situ Rinpoche, the 12th reincarnation of a Buddhist Lama or spiritual master, who can trace his lineage back to one of Prince Siddhartha's original disciples. Buddha, as we know, was born miraculously, and we know that he, like Jesus, uh, was tempted by the devil. Uh, we know that he performed miracles um, and there are some miracles which are very similar to the miracles of Jesus um, walking on water. We know that Jesus is life. He challenges the religious order and so does Buddha. So, I mean, how do you understand the similarities that there are in their lives, just in the lives and the way that they're mapped out? Well, uh, uh, I this is interesting because uh, on earth you cannot find 